Welcome to the Archetypal Mosaic. This is Mikhail Tech. Today we have an extraordinary guest, Dr. Adrian David Chiak. I'd like to remind listeners that this episode is of a mature nature and is meant for adults who are interested in the subject of sex with robots. Dr. Adrian David Chiak is a director of the Imagineering Institute Malaysia and chair professor of Pervasive Computing at City University of London. He's founder and director of the Mixed Reality Lab Singapore. He was formerly full professor at Keio University, Graduate School of Media Design, and associate producer, professor in the National University of Singapore. He has previously worked in real-time systems, soft computing, and embedded computing in Mitsubishi Electric Research Labs, Japan. This show is not meant to diagnose, treat, or provide advice for medical, sexual, emotional, psychological topics. It's meant for entertainment and personal education. Um, welcome to the show, Dr. Chiak. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to be, great to be on the show. Uh, how important is emotion in sex and communication? And is the approach to making the sexual robots to be more human or less human? Yes, a very good question. So I think, with, you know, for the emotion part, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's, I think it, it's not uh, so easy to answer for the whole, you know, human population because there is, there is variation. Um, you know, there's, there, there's, there's certainly a uh, percentage of the population which, uh, uh, you know, can enjoy, uh, uh, you know, can, can enjoy sexual activity uh, without, you know, without necessarily feeling emotion. And you know we already know that uh, even people uh, can use can 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 uh, you know use a service of prostitutes where you're just basically paying money and it's a kind of a transaction. So obviously that uh, it, it is it is definitely uh, definitely already possible in human society that uh, um, uh, people don't don't necessarily need to have uh, emotion or at least not very much emotion to enjoy sex. But on the other hand, on the, on the other side. Uh, there would be a lot of people that uh, you know couldn't couldn't uh, would would not would not want to have sex without being in love and you know or maybe even being being married uh, uh, you know uh, and so I think most people maybe would fit somewhere in in between that spectrum you know that maybe they would prefer to have emotion uh, you know emotional feelings with with their sexual partner but at the same time you know it's possible once or twice or three times in your life that you have a uh, sexual content without without any necessarily having emotion. So I think probably most people fit somewhere in between those uh, those two sides of the spectrum. And how realistic should the robots be? Well, um, you know, I, I think I think that again, it depends on on uh, how on, on uh, how much uh, the person uh, is placing emphasis on the let's say visual visual aspect. So it's very very important. For a person that you know they're, they're having sex with uh, someone who's, who's, who's uh, visually pleasing, then I think they'll pay pay high importance on the you know hu human humanoid realism uh, of the robot. But for someone else, maybe the emotional part is more important. So so uh, uh, so then um, uh, robots which are uh, simulating emotion. I I I personally don't think robots will have a, a consciousness. I, I'm, I may be wrong. I may be wrong, but I think that. Uh, robots are still essentially pro program programmable, you know, programmable machines, programmable computers, and but uh, I think they can simulate emotion and simulate intelligence to a very very high degree that that we can't tell the difference. Uh, so you know, effectively they are emotional from from all uh, from the sense of us observing. Um, so so you know, then in that case maybe uh, the robot doesn't have to be very realistic. Maybe it kind of looks metallic or. You know, more like a robot, but you know, you have a lot of emotional uh, feeling for the for the robot. So, so uh, you know, so for both parts, I think you know, it will vary. It varies with the personality of the person. Uh, you know, and 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 uh, uh, there, there is there is correlation between emotion and sex, but it depends on the person how strong that correlation is. That's wonderful. And it's interesting that I think at your conference I'll be partially discussing the possibility of consciousness in this in these beings, interestingly. Um, tell me, please, uh, your origins on, of the interest in this topic. Now, you are a very well-learned man, 
uh, with also a professor. Uh, what got you into this particular topic? Well, I, I, you know, my background is electrical and electronic engineering. So, uh, you know, I, ever since I was very young, I was always very interested in, in robotics uh, as, as, as a subject. And uh, uh, I, my, in my formative years, when I was a fresh graduate, you know, I, I, as you mentioned earlier, I worked at Mitsubishi Electric. I was in Japan, and you know, Japan used to be used to be world leader in robotics. I think America is now, but at that time it was Japan, and it was just just fascinating for me the whole area of of, of robotics. And and I uh, I wanted I also became very uh, interested in the area of called mixed reality, where you know we're merging the real and the virtual world. And if you think about it, a robot is the kind of a physical representation of the virtual world. It's like you have the artificial intelligence, you've got connection to internet, um, and you've, you've got, uh, uh, you know, the, the computer, which is the brain of the robot, and, it, and it's a physical being. So it's, it's, it's a physical representation of the virtual world. And the opposite, of course, is that we can have virtual characters, you know, 3D graphical characters, and, uh, you know, even now you can go and see movies. You know, probably the very famous case is... Uh, uh, the last Star Wars movie, Rogue One, where we saw, you know, Princess Leia again, Ma amazing, but, you know, just computer graphics, uh, uh, of, uh, it looks so realistic, so it looks like a real person. So we, we can do both now, we can have very realistic robots, human robots in, in the physical world, and, and very realistic, uh, humans in the virtual world, you know, and, so I think my main issues come from that, that background, and just by very, you know, lucky, I guess a lot of things in life is, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of, uh, serendipity, uh, coincidence even, you know, I, I met, uh, uh, Dr. David Levy and he was the author of a book called Love and Sex with Robots, which was, uh, published, uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, and, uh, it, it was a very well read book, it made a lot of impact. And, uh, he, 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 his background is artificial intelligence. In fact, he was a, uh, you know, a chess master. I think it was, it was a chess master in, uh, uh, United Kingdom for three or four years. So, you know, he, he was very interested in, artificial intelligence, computers that can play chess. And then he got into that topic, he wrote the book. And so I think, you know, when we met, uh, our inter you know, we, we found we had, we had very, quite similar interests. And, uh, um, and also, uh, David Levy is not part of academia. He's, he, he's a scientist, but, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's working purely privately, writing books, you know, and uh, running some companies. And I think uh, he was also looking for uh, someone in academia uh, that could look at the academic perspective of this topic, because I think you know there's a lot of very, very deep uh, academic aspects of this of this topic. Not you know, so one is of course the technology, the engineering, how we're going to make these robots, how they're going to be intelligent, how they, how do we program robots to be emotional? But also there's the uh, you know ethical aspects, and people are uh, even thinking about legal aspects. You know, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, at the last Love and Sex with Robots conference in London. Uh, Dr. David Levy gave a keynote speech, and he predicted that by 2050, we'll, by 2050, it'll be legal to marry a robot. So, we, you know, even talking about legal legal issues uh, of, of of the body. So, I think, you know, this topic uh, has been, you know, I think, I guess, you know, it's, it's been in in human consciousness for, for for many years, I guess. And then I think Dr. David Levy's book kind of, you know. Really, really started 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 this to be a uh, a very well known topic, and now I think it's become very well known, and 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 a lot of a lot of serious academics are really thinking that you know this is going to happen, and uh, you know that it's a, it's a it's a very exciting area uh, for research, and uh, you know from a personal point of view, uh, you know I I I like to do very different things in my re in in my research. I like, I like to push the barriers. Uh, I'm a bit of a, I guess I guess you could say I'm a bit of a rebel, bit of a rebel. So to me, I'm, I'm, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking all academics that have spoken against this conference and say it shouldn't shouldn't be held. Uh, and so there is, you know, there is still a lot of academics who uh, feel this is not a not a not a suitable topic. But you know, I, I think uh, also my 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 perspective, I like to really push the boundaries of of research and and you know. And uh, be, be 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 rebellious. <laughs> so it also fits my my uh, personality as well to kind of you know push the barriers of research. That's that's fascinating. Let me ask you this: so, if we look back in time, there's the golem 
who is not quite a robot, but a, a being created by man for purpose. Then, uh, you know, if we look at the sex dolls, they, they have the, the plastic ones or the silicone ones in the stores. And virtual reality, even now, it's very dinosaur-like. We have to put those big uh, things on to stick the phone in. And it looks like something from the early 80s to me. And we, we're not really submersed into the virtual reality because it's sitting on our head like a big blob. So my question to you is, yeah. in, in the future, um, because virtual reality, in a, in a sense, can actually be a virtual consciousness... Um, if if somebody can be uh, believe enough or it can intake them, um, let me ask you. So, how are sex robots different than sex dolls? For example, will they be able mm -hmm. to move by themselves, uh, have a natural rhythm and flow, um, or are they fully only programmable? Or do they just lie there like a doll? The The other part of this question is the vir <laughs> the virtual aspect. Is there a way for the doll um, to virtually uh, penetrate the brain? It, to somehow take the, yes. the user into a different space, almost like a natural form of a drug? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Very good question. So, um... Uh, so yeah, for, for the sex doll part, I think it's just definitely part of the uh, evolution. You know, just like uh, you know, when when uh, when I was a kid, we had pocket calculators in school, uh, but that actually was the first step for the personal computer. You know, to have these kind of uh, digi digital digital computers, they couldn't do as much at the time. Just you know, uh, add, add and subtract and multiply. But you know, that was the start of uh, the microchip and leading on to personal computer. So I think it's definitely part of the evolution. To have these sex dolls, but you know, like you said, they're, they're dolls. They're, they're, they're not. They don't move. They don't have, they don't have any consciousness. Um, I mean, uh, they don't have any uh, appearance of consciousness at all. Um, and so I think what the uh, aim and what the end state of of this research will be, and finally, of course, you know, there'll be commercial products. Well, that we'll have, you know, realistic humanoid robots which have artificial intelligence, digital brains, artificial intelligence. Um, they can understand very, very importantly, is that they can understand human language. So you know, you because you know, I mean, you need to be able to talk to 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 someone to have empathy for them. It's very difficult to have empathy out if you can't understand each other. Um, so um, you know, the, 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 there'll be the natural language as well, very very critical part. And then of course, um, we also will have uh, personalities. We'll give personalities to the robots. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, you know, if someone, if someone enjoys the kind of relationship where, you know, a lot of friction and maybe some argument, then they might want an argumentative robot. And if they want, if that, you know, some people prefer relationships where it's very calm, there's no friction, then you have a very calm robot. So I think, you know, robots also will have personality. So there's a software side. I think what's missing with the, with the sex dolls is two main parts. One is the software, the artificial intelligence and the software. And the second one is the mechanics. So the movement, you can't, you know, they don't move. But when we, you know, eventually the robots will be humanoid. They'll be able to move just like humans, you know, walking um, and moving, any any kind of action. And, and also they will have the, the artificial intelligence, the software part. This is the part which is now under research, you know. And, and you know, believe it or not, it's still very difficult to have a computer to understand human speech. I mean, I think we've all used our smartphone to, you know, talk to Google or talk to the, you know, Apple Siri. But, you know, it's 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 still very, very basic and there's a lot of research to be done just in that area. So but when all these different areas come together, um, then I think we'll have, you know, what we consider to be, you know, uh, the the next generation of uh, of of, of uh, sex, sex robots. And um uh, actually, uh, if we even go back even further, uh, a few thousand years, uh, the Greeks had a very famous story, uh, you know, a myth uh, about a, a sculptor called Pyg Pygmalion, and he made a, a statue which, which, which he made the statue, he thought it was so beautiful that he fell in love with his own statue, the statue that he made, and then, you know, it's kind of a myth, and then the gods bring the statue to life and they, you know, get married or whatever. But, you know, obviously people have been thinking about this 
for thousands of years has kind of been in the human consciousness. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not um, only an, uh, 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 a, a recent phenomenon. I think people have been thinking about this, and, and they want it. So I think uh, it, you know, it, with the technology moving so so quickly, it's, it's definitely going to happen. Uh, uh, you know, within within our lifetimes, I think. Sorry, I forgot the uh, end, the second part of your question. Certainly, the, uh, I wanted to ask you. All, uh, uh, the second part was about the virtual reality aspect. It's about um, can the can the robot, or is there such a a plan for the robot to take the person into a virtual sexual journey, so that it's not just yes, yes. A, a physical. Uh, situation, especially now, you know, there's just a, a silicone doll laying there, so there's really no interaction. But when these r robots, as opposed to just the dolls, um, will they be able to move and, and penetrate and do all these things with their own kind of uh, choices? Or is the person going to program them every move? And in the virtual aspect is, can the, the robot, can this creature somehow maybe hypnotize or or place the person into a virtual state of consciousness. Mm. Yes, yes, I, I, yeah, very good question, and uh, I think uh, uh, yes, def definitely uh, we will be able to uh, fall in love and have sex with robots in the virtual world. I mean. Uh, there was a movie uh, a couple of years ago called Her about the man who fell in love with a you know virtual character. He couldn't even see her. It was it was, it was just a voice. Oh yeah. Uh, but you know we could we, we could we ever everyone could 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 uh, easily uh, predict that this could be true. You could fall in love with a character even even if you can't see her, you just hear her, her hear her voice. But let alone now with uh, virtuality, uh, you know, like you said, the headsets are still. You know, uh, very quite clunky. They're quite big. I think it's to do with the optics. It's quite difficult to get them in, in, in much smaller. But you know, nevertheless, you know, we'll have we have we, we already we already do have 360 degrees virtual reality, and uh, we can we can enter uh, a virtual world. And uh, so, um, I, you know, just 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 like when people you know watch a movie. Uh, they they can forget about their life. They they kind of feel you know if you see a very good movie you forget everything and you kind of just immerse in the in the, in this movie. It's a great feeling and I think very, you know if, if it goes to 3D virtual reality, people will uh, be able to feel as if they're in this vir this virtual environment and, and you know feel feel like they're really there. I think if we provide the, the 3D uh, high resolution graphics, the sound. And then we have maybe have, we have some devices on our body which can put pressure and you know uh, stim stimulate stimulate the body with haptics or touch. Then I think it, it can be uh, 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 very very uh, immersive. And uh, and and you know um, uh, actually uh, you know I think probably some of the uh, the the, the uh, first content. They, you know, right now a lot of these head, head mount displays coming out. You know, three D virtual reality. I, I think a lot of the content is is of uh, you know sexually related nature and pornography. Just like when the internet first started, I think half of the traffic was was pornography. And and uh, and, and it, you know, in some way, in some way, it's okay because uh, uh, it allows these technologies to grow. Because you know, there's a there, that, that, that's how a lot of these new technologies make money. Uh, and uh, but now internet is used for everything. You know, you book a taxi, you you you, you use Uber, and you you book a hotel, you use Airbnb. You know, so now everything has become part of the internet. So I think was was wasn't necessarily a bad thing that you know in the early days of internet that a lot of it was about pornography. So and I think similarly for virtual reality is going to be like that, and it's going to drive the uh, technology to even more and more and more realistic levels. Um, so, so I think yes. I think basically, uh, it, it's it's highly correlated. The, the the robot is a physical representation of the of a virtual character, but we can also do the opposite. We can go into the virtual world ourselves. So I think it's very very highly correlated. Um, uh, you know, the the robot, physical robot, and 
and virtual robot, and we can have sex with both, you know, either or of these robots. What very cool. Um, let's talk about how these incredible robots can help society in a way. Uh, in a way, um, older people who still want to enjoy sex, sometimes they may feel shame because of age, maybe because of the way their body is, or maybe because they can't find partners. And so, in those cases, along with many others, uh, for adults of of their older age, it would be a wonderful thing to have because they'd be able to enjoy their sexuality. Um, can you talk about that and also all the other kind of benefits in society that this could fill? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I definitely think that, you know, these technologies are going to increase, you know, human happiness. And uh, uh, you, you mentioned that elderly people, a lot of elderly people, are very lonely, and uh, you know I think uh, I saw a recent survey, which was done in UK, that you know forty percent of elderly people uh, 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 have no have, have have no physical, you know, I mean they they have no physical contact with anybody. They just they're just watching TV in, in their house, and uh, um, they're going to get a telephone call every now and then. But they 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 have no contact with the, with the, with the other other humans, uh, so other people. So a lot of a lot of lot of very lonely people, and uh, you know, uh, then also, uh, the, you know, people who, who maybe may be very shy, uh, could be autistic, where they, they find it difficult to make 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 human relations. Um, and there's also disabled people, people born with disabilities. There's a lot of people that went you know went to war, uh, and they you know like uh, uh, even in America, a lot of people went to war in, in the Middle East and come up with disabilities. And I think uh, uh, we we tend to assume we tend to assume that you know everyone in society that wants to have sex can have sex. But I think there's a lot of there's a lot of people. I don't know what the percentage is, but you know it must be must be fairly high. Uh, a lot of people don't 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 have the ability to find a, a sexual partner or have a sexual partner, and uh, you know they don't want to visit a prostitute, uh, you know, for some reason or another. Uh, and uh, you know, so so the uh, uh, love and sex robots could really fulfil uh, a human need and increase their happiness. And it might not just be sex, but it's like you said, let me. But it, it is elderly people. You know, we've been think, we've been thinking about in the lab about you know, can we make a grandmother robot? Can we uh, can we can we get a, a computer to chat with grandmother? You know, every day and 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 and, and model her personality. Uh, so that you know, if grandmother passed away, you can have a grandmother robot, and and she can just talk and be like grandmother to, to you know to the grandfather. So um, uh, I, I think the the love part is, is is just as important as the sex part, and and some and and you know uh, that that can really really help to increase people's uh, happiness, to increase loneliness, and a lot a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, people. Uh, you know, do do have a lot of uh, uh, um, loneliness and, and sadness because they can't find a uh, a partner or they've lost a partner. So, so I think you know, robots can fulfil this need. Maybe they won't be perfect. They won't maybe they won't be perfect reproduction of humans. But you know, uh, if it's, it's, uh, if it's eighty or ninety percent, it's good enough. And I think people will, will be happy uh, with, with with such robots. Um, that's uh, you brought up a lot of really important points especially about uh, the people in our society who who it's not possible or easy to get sex and and how this could make bring them happiness that's a very important point that you're absolutely right that many people don't even consider uh, thinking about um you know another way that they could be used as in prisons as conjugal visits instead of them because it would be a way to um i don't know supply that demand without any kind of uh, with a very kind of safe way, I'd say. What do you think about that? Yes, well, you do hear a lot of uh, cases of, you know, that, uh, there's some rape, rape, rape happening in prisons and uh, there's some enough done to, to prevent it. And, uh, you know, if you, if you compare that situation with maybe having a robot, uh, then uh, uh, I think it will be better because, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't want a situation where people get raped or you know forced to 
who uh, you know have sex against their will. So, I mean, there is some ethical concerns because then people are saying, you know, it's it's, it's bad for the robot. But uh, yeah, I I I think if you compare the two, uh, you know, we, we we definitely would like to uh, prevent you know bad things happening. So uh, I, I think that also could could be uh, an important uh, use case. But again, we also have to we will also have to consider that uh, there, is, there is people already thinking about robot ethics. So, mm. so uh, uh, we have to maybe we have to even think about uh, how does a robot feel, you know, uh, uh, in, in, in that uh, situation. And that's that's a wonderful thing to bring up. I wanted to ask about that from two perspectives. From the human perspective, um, if a robot goes too far, uh, will every robot, can every robot have a kill switch? And then from the um, from the other perspective, uh, my question would be: If people misuse uh, robots. Are robots really like refrigerators? Are they appliances? After all, because we are using them uh, and they are mechanical devices, or are they, or are we taking them for what they appear to be but aren't, which is humanoids with the term human? So, from both of those perspectives, yes. can you tell us more? Yes, sir. Uh, uh... Well, I I I think that um, it's it's a very difficult question, you know, to 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 really have an answer at this stage. I think it's going to take many many years for us to work out uh, the answer to the, to the question. But but uh, I think yes. So as far as the kind of the kill switch or killing off the robot, uh, I'm 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 uh, very confident that that is possible because you know, ultimately these robots are programmed. By programmers, and we can always put some line of code. You know, it can even be like you know, if a certain combination of the words are said in the sequence or something, you know, the robot will shut down. It doesn't it doesn't have to be a physical switch, right? So you can always insert this line of code in in, in the in the computer's brain, uh, um, or computer's you know, digital brain. Uh, but then then maybe some people will say that maybe the, the program can reprogram itself and remove that you know that line of code. So again, you know, it's difficult to 100% say that, you know, we can turn off the robot. It's, it's, you know, uh, I think that at least in the early stages we can, but it's not, it's not uh, beyond uh, possibility that the robot, the ro whatever we put, whatever code we put in the robot, put, you know, some kind of shutdown routine, so to speak, that the robot could reprogram itself uh, to, to remove that, 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 you know, those lines of code. Which is in, in its uh, in its uh, hard drive or, or RAM, whatever. Um, so, and then the second question is uh, uh, about you know again related to kind of robot ethics. You know, so for example, would should we allow people to, to be violent to robots if, if they want to, or or uh, you know um, uh, uh, to do things which if they did it to humans we would find unethical and uh, it's hard to say because I'm not, there is one argu there is some argument that it's it, it's better it's much better for uh, if, if, if a human is going to do some kind of bad thing like violence or whatever it, it's better to do it to a, to a robot than yes. to a human yes. uh, there's, there's that argument but then there's the other argument too that you know people are really going to if people are really going to fall in love with robots and fall in and have empathy for robots and someone comes in and, and, and is violent to your robot would you feel protective of your robot? Probably people would. Uh, I think just, you know, when when we're, you know, in 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 the in the uh, you know for humans living in the real world, uh, you know, we, we we're not we're not we're not uh, uh, mathematical creatures or digital creatures, and then we think, okay, this, this is a robot, so you know, we can ignore uh, how we treat them. But you know, we will feel empathy, especially if the robots are. Uh, uh, intelligent are talking to us like humans. We'll feel empathy. Just like now, you can feel empathy for your pet cat. You know, your, even your pet hamster. You know, people would feel, feel very bad if you treat animals badly. And maybe we will. Just like now, we have animal rights. We also will have robot rights in in in, in the future. Um, and I, I think uh, that uh, it's it's because of the fact that you know, even though they are machines, even though robots are 
uh, are not human creatures, but uh, we, we we could feel uh, love and empathy for them. So then, you know, we probably will uh, want to give them some uh, some kind of rights, you know, robot robot rights. And this is not beyond uh, this is not beyond the, the realms of possibilities. You know, a human society can adapt and can change uh, very rapidly. So, uh, you know, like uh, even 10 years ago, we would never imagine that um, homosexual marriage is, is, is not only legal in, in USA, but it's, it's a, you know, constitutional, constitutional rights that they should like, get married. And then you just think 50 years ago, uh, black, black, black and white people couldn't marry together in some states. And, you know, that kind of sounds outrageous now. So, uh, you know, so, so I think, you know, human society will adapt and we will have some... Uh, basic uh, uh, rights given to to, to to robots, you know, and uh, uh, even even if they're not alive in in the way that you know humans are alive, uh, but they are definitely uh, going to be uh, going to be some kind of digital creatures which uh, have uh, at least a very very high simulation of intelligence and emotion. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with the projection. Con you know, uh, human, if humans are creating these machines and the virtual reality that comes along with it, and then they project onto them their own emotions, just like some people do with pets. I mean, um, animals are very special and they do have feelings, but at the same time, people can place onto a dog or a cat that it's... Um, you know, this and that and all this stuff. And it could be just, you know, barking or meowing because it wants to go to the bathroom, but you can take it as it's telling you that it loves you. And so the the, the projection aspect is so uh, impactful that I think that's going to be the, the, the boundary with the with the robot, robot ethics when we either try to project our feelings onto them or if we take them for what they really are. And um, how important do you think projection is to both the building and the future of robotics? It's true. I mean, uh, we, we tend to, uh, you know, we, you know we, we, we're naturally anthropomorphic. We, we, you know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, we, it's, uh, you know, the way that we think is, is because of the way that we are, uh, you know, we, we are physically in this world with human bodies, with two legs, with two arms, you know, with two eyes. And, uh, uh, you know, psychologists, neuroscientists have, you know, pretty concretely shown that our thinking is based on our body, how, you know, how we have mental maps of our body. And uh, uh, so uh, we're not, uh, you know, uh, like our brains are not separated from our body. We're totally all integrated and our thinking is affected by our body. So uh, similarly, if we make robots which are humanoid, which are, which are, you know, which appear to be very intelligent, which we can have a conversation with, which, you know, we'll, 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 we, we can feel friendship with, we can feel love with, then uh, we will project, yes, we will project our own humanness onto, onto those robots. Just like you said, when we have pets, I think if anyone can fall in love with a pet, then they are humans and from an evolutionary perspective, it doesn't really make sense to fall in love with another another species because uh, it, it, you know it's, it's not uh, uh, it's not going to you're not going to reproduce yourself with, uh, in that way. But so, but we're not just digital computers. You know, if you have empathy for other human beings, then that empathy will extend to you know other animals and even inanimate objects. Even now, you know. Uh, uh, you know, children, for example, they might have the favorite teddy bear, uh, or you know, people have a lucky, lucky charm. You know, so so even totally inanimate objects, we can project our uh, you know humanity onto them. Let alone if you have these you know robots, which are uh, almost almost human-like in every way. Uh, so I think yes, we we will we will project our, our uh, human humanness, and you know, we naturally you know naturally think. Uh, from a human perspective, because we think we think because of our bodies, we, we, our bodies and brains are one. Um, tell me, 
are there any specific things in the robot that are beyond that will deliver things beyond humans um, in a way how does a sex robot recharge itself does it need any kind of washing and cleaning or um, how does it you know how do you upkeep it and d can it do anything for itself that we can't do as humans yes yes well I mean I think uh, uh, th you know definitely uh, of course robots will be able, will be able to you know surpass humans in many ways I mean already uh, already um, you know, we have uh, very, very intelligent computers, and uh, last year, a uh, computer beats, uh, the, you know, a human in the game Go, which is, you know, kind of a Chinese or Japanese game with uh, kind of like check checkers. But it's got so many combinations that people were saying, you know, no computer will be able to beat a human until maybe 2050. Uh, but, you know, it happened in 2016. So uh, the, the, the robots are surpassing humans in many, many ways. Um, and uh, I think anything which 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 uh, can be done mathematically uh, or mechanically, uh, you know, the robot and computer can surpass humans. So, uh, you know, for for example, just on a basic thing, a robot will never get tired. Uh, will always be in the mood. <laughs> you know, <laughs> if you program the robot to I like to always be in the mood for for having sex, it, it, it will and. Uh, Whereas humans get tired and they they're not always interested in having sex and they, they feel like sleeping and also you know uh, working and whatever. So uh, in many ways, even on a very simple way, humans can uh, sorry robots could could surpass humans. Uh, and uh, uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that that you know humanity becomes irrelevant. I I think that you know we as as humans will. Will start to will go go to you know higher level of humanity because we don't you know a lot of things we don't think about anymore. You know, uh, 100 years ago, I think children used to learn you know 25 times tables. You know, in, in, and and now we think, well, you know, why would you do that? It's a complete waste of time. But at that time, it was important when they, you know, uh, they didn't have calc pocket calculators and computers and things. So, but now you know a lot of, a lot of things we don't need to learn anymore. But I think you know we're we're um, uh, human brains to think more and more and more creative things and more and more higher higher order uh, things in our brains. So I think I think uh, it, it won't be robots taking over humans. It'll be uh, you know robots actually will help to improve humanity. We can think about more more and more and more high level creative things. Um, and yeah, even um, and what you said about the you know um, uh, you know the, the the mechanics. You know, uh, surely if we can. Program a robot to have sex, and a pro we can program the robot to uh, plug itself to electricity. Maybe it's wireless charging in the future. You don't have to plug yourself in. It's you know we already have mobile phones with wireless charging, and uh, you know you could program a robot to clean itself. In fact, you could probably program robots to be more clean than humans. You know, so <laughs> so uh, uh, so even in this way, it could surpass. Uh, 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 Surpass, surpass humans, you know, and uh, uh, a lot of people don't like to, you know, now, now, uh, I think a lot of people don't like to go to uh, different postures because they think, you know, it's a little bit unclean, and and you know, the, so with the robot can be as clean as you want, and you know, they, it, it, so I think it, it can, it can, it can do all those things, uh, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll be able to uh, have all those, uh, uh, you know, details. Uh, you know, aspects of the robot to be solved. I, I think, you know, I, I think that um, it, it, it's uh, definitely uh, within the realm that, that, you know, that robots will actually be surpassing humans in, in many, in many, many ways, uh, in, including in, 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 including sex robots. Um, but not to take it on a negative thing, I, th I think humanity will improve because, you know, somehow we can have uh, more time for for being more creative or, or thinking higher level or the things or inventing new things. You know, what's going to be, what's going to be the next thing after robots? Uh, that's wonderful and fascinating. I agree with you about them helping society. And um, a couple of interesting things, for example, you know, there's sperm banks. And sometimes, you know, somebody buys sperm and needs to inseminate. 
could the robots do the function of actually inseminating? Um, another question is, in some Asian countries, in brothels, uh, they have uh, sex robots and human <coughs> prostitutes, and they cost the same amount of money. Um, so is that probably because it's a new thing? And it's just something to try out, or is there is the value of sex robots equal to that of humans? And lastly, on this question, uh, is it possible for robots to um, give STDs to humans, or do you think the cleaning capacity is so much stronger that one the robot could disinfect itself after every use? Um, and if so, would the manufacturer be somebody who would be liable for something like that? Yeah, yeah, well, um, you know, I think the, the, the sex robots now, are, you know, still, we're in the very, very early stage, so um, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near what we're going to have in the future, and, you know, the artificial intelligence stuff is, is still definitely not there. But so I think for now, um, you know, it's probably the novelty factor, why, why people want to pay. Hello. Hello. The robot. You know, actually, um, actually, the uh, uh, visiting prostitute. Is it, I think a lot of people find it very, a little bit uncomfortable. It's kind of a strange situation. You know, it's, <laughs> it's uh, and maybe maybe people feel a bit uncomfortable. They feel much better with the robot because they but they feel more comfortable. Maybe they mm -hmm. can enjoy actually enjoy the sex more in that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, with the prostitute. If it's a robot, because they feel uh, less uncomfortable with the mm -hmm. uh, with the situation. So, um, uh, and as far as uh, uh, you know, transmitting diseases and things, you know, I, I of course, it, it is. I, I, I don't. I think it's, it, it's possible because you know, obviously, any 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 object with, which people are sharing could you can have transmission of. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a medical person. I'm an engineer, mm -hmm. but I, I I can see there's a possibility. Uh, any any object which people share uh, in a sexual way, you could it, it could uh, you know have bacteria. Um, of course, you could think of some fantastic cleaning mechanism which will get rid of all bacteria. I'm sure it's possible, but I think you know uh, uh, I think really that this is a temporary stage. I think people won't visit robots to have sex. I think they'll just buy one. You know, uh, they'll just go to the store and buy one or order, order it through through the internet. Uh, because just like now, I mean, who would think anyone would need to share a computer anymore? Nobody does. Everyone's got their own computer. Everyone's got their own uh, uh, smartphone and uh, uh, tablet PC. You know, so so I think very similarly, you know, you, we, we would just have our own robot and and uh, maybe, maybe more than one, maybe maybe a few robots in, in the house. Um, and uh, uh, and then uh, they'll, they'll be they'll be tuned exactly to what we want. How, the, how we want them to look, how we want them to act, what is their personality. So uh, I think, you know, uh, uh, the question of transmitting diseases probably wouldn't happen because we're going to have our own robots in, mm -hmm. in, in our house. Uh, you know, I think that, that's going to be the, the norm. Just like now, it's normal everyone to have their own uh, computer, whereas uh, maybe at the very start, the dawn of computing, we, you know, we had mainframe computers, we were sharing computers, but we're not, we're not doing that anymore. You brought up an amazing point about the fact that robots can make somebody feel more comfortable. The fact that uh, different sexes or different people to each other can make each other feel judged or shamed. Whether there is real judge or shame isn't the factor of how the person feels. Somebody can feel judged or shamed by a person, but a robot most likely won't give them that feeling. Um, that's a very, very important yeah. point. Um, if there are many people... <clears throat> who like variety, who aren't satisfied with one person or one robot or one doll, and maybe they don't want to necessarily purchase a variety of robots. Uh, is there such a thought or a plan to create a kind of a shape-shifting robot who can uh, transform physically um, so that there's almost every day or every week there's a, you know, a new... Uh, version of itself uh, with multiple you know yeah that's a very good question very good question yeah i mean i, I think uh uh uh, uh you know it's maybe 
I think it's two things that can be changed. One is the personality, uh, which which can be done in software. That's very easy. You know, you basically just uh, maybe you download a download a. There'll be a website of of the company that makes the robot. You can just download a new personality and install it onto your robot. So that 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 can be easily done because it's software. And for the physical aspect, you know, maybe uh, you don't have to replace everything about the robot. You know, the arms and legs. The, uh, you know, main, main parts of the robot maybe that are very similar, and you need, you're changing the face and the hair, and uh, maybe that also can be easily done. Just like now, we can change the, uh, you know, people express their personality with their uh, phone covers. You know, uh, you can buy a, a phone and then put a, put a different cover on it. Uh, one is for you know protecting your phone, but also people are showing their personality with the different kind of covers that they buy. But you can change the phone cover every day if you like. If you have a a different different cover. So, and and we could think of, we could think of a lot of different models. You know, for example, like uh, uh, the old Netflix, where you got a DVD, you know, sent to your house, and you send it back. You know, another DVD. Maybe that, maybe that will be another uh, another model where uh, okay, you you uh, you want to change the appearance of your robot. You, you just you just send the uh, the head back. If you get another head, you plug it onto your robot because <laughs> probably the body. You know, maybe it would be almost the same uh, anyway. But so you, you know, we really could think of a lot of different models uh, uh, about how this could work. But yes, I think it's definitely possible. And uh, you're right, people, want, people would like variety. And, and on a related note, uh, I don't know whether, whether if a married couple, whether, let's, say, let's say the wife has, has sex with a, uh, a, a robot, is that committing adultery? I, I don't know. We don't know the, I don't, we don't know the answer to that, to that yet, really, because it's never, never, never happened before, really. But, uh, you know, for those people who are, you know, basically happily married, uh, but they maybe maybe the husband or the wife well would like some sexual variety. Maybe the robot can fulfill fill that need without them having to have a, a affair with a with a with a human person. But then there's the other question: whether uh, you know having sex with a robot if you're married is the same as having an affair. So you know these are questions that we have to have to answer. But you know I think um, you know maybe it is better to have the. the, the uh, sexual variety with the robot rather than, uh, you know, having many other uh, boyfriends or girlfriends. That brings me perfectly into, uh, I just recently released on Kindle a, uh, an innovative story called Robo Jealousy. In it, it's the other way around. It's the robot that becomes jealous of, the, of her boyfriend's ex-girlfriend. So the robot becomes jealous of the human, and then she does something very naughty. Um, so I was wondering... How possible is it? I mean, jealousy, after all, when it comes to sex and love, is probably in the top three feelings, I'd say. Um, how possible is it, because jealousy is so instinctual, for the robot to possibly feel jealousy, and then back to the question before, which is ethics. Who is going to write the ethics the ethics book on robotics, uh, on humanoids and sexual humanoids. Uh, who is going to be in charge of that? Do you have any suggestions? Yeah, I don't think there's anyone in charge of that. I mean, I, I mean, there could be, but I think uh, that, that uh, uh, you know, just, just like uh, uh, just like now, uh, you know, when you drive a car uh, and you crash the car, well, you know. You, the, the, the manufacturer of a car is not responsible for the crash. Everyone has to buy insurance. I think it's, I think it's uh, uh, illegal to not drive without insurance. So I think you know when you buy a robot, there will be some kind of uh, uh, insurance taken. You know, if something if the robot does something wrong or does something bad, it's not really the, we can't we can't really blame the robot. It's just a machine, and we can't also really blame the programmer or the manufacturer. It doesn't really make sense. So I think it's going to be very very similar. To what we have now for cars, you know, everyone has to have insurance, and uh, you know, we we just we just uh, work it out legally w without without real blame, you know, if there's some quick crash or accident with a car. Um, but you're right, jealousy, I think, is very very much part of uh, uh, human love, human attachment. It's a very it's a very uh, essential part. And, but you know, uh, I was reading I was reading an article that you know the whole thing about the '60s and and uh, they had those kind of communes and, you know, free sex, everyone had sex with each other. It didn't last very long. 
didn't last very long at all. But the, 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 people just naturally got jealous, and they they, uh, uh, they had had a, you know, when you form attachments, jealousy was part of it. That's why this whole thing, you know, lasted for a few years in the sixties and maybe a little bit in the seventies too. But a lot of those kind of communes have kind of fell apart, and a lot of fighting went on, and you know. Uh, and it wasn't, wasn't a very good situation. So I think it's a very natural part. It's something within, within the, the human nature, for whatever reason, we've, we've, we've been evolving over million, millions and, and millions and billions of years. And, and uh, you, know, we, part, you know, when we fall in love with someone, we, we feel kind of jealous if they uh, have uh, loving feelings for someone else uh, instead of us. I, think, I guess it's some kind of natural uh, evolutionary uh, must be some advantage for us to feel jealous, otherwise we wouldn't have developed this, this personality uh, to feel jealous. But, you know, um, I think we, we, if we want robots to be realistic, yes, we will, we will program them to have, you know, or at least simulate jealousy as well. And, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, because, because we, we, that will make them, we will, that we will feel them, they are more human-like because because it's characteristic, but but also of course it is possible to say okay I'm going to build a robot which which feels zero jealousy because you know it, it's basically uh, pro- programming uh, in in code and so it's possible to do that. But uh, probably most people say yes. No, I, I want I want a robot who loves me and feels jealous about me. You know because I feel that's kind of that that's that's, uh, that, that's like a real human love. So uh, we will program that program that into robots. But of course. Yeah, like you said, if they did something wrong, like, you know, jealous lovers, they'll, you know, kill, go and go and shoot someone <laughs> with a gun. If a robot does that, who do we blame? It's a very difficult question. But I think we're going to have some kind of, uh, you know, liability insurance. You know, whenever you buy a robot, uh, you know, there'll be insurance to, to cover. I can't maybe, maybe, maybe the shooting was a bit, bit of a drastic example, <laughs> but, you know, let's say the robot hits, hits someone else. So we have some insurance to compensate for that, for example. Okay. And what about the ethics part? Is there who? Do, what kind of committee do you think is going to form to uh, to do this? Yes. Uh, well, I think I think that uh, you know it, it, it could be someone who writes the book of ethics. That's like that's like religion, you know. So you know we have the Bible and the Ten Commandments are there, and you know uh, all the different religions. That's kind of like a uh, you know command from above, so to speak. So it could be it could be the fact that you know. We appoint someone or some group of people to, to do the ethics of robots, but I think in general it's going to be some combination of uh, regulation from government, and also also uh, there'll there'll be cases that go to court, and they'll go to they'll, they'll probably go up to the Supreme Court, you know, and uh, and then you know judgments will, will be made because like right now uh, a lot of the answers we can philosophize about it, you know, uh, for ten years and not find find the answer, practical answer. So I think you know, there'll be some combination of, of regulation by government. There'll be some combination of things will happen, things will, things will go to court, they'll have the Supreme Court, and then you know decisions will be made by the uh, you know the Supreme Court judges. And, and other things uh, maybe will be maybe on a lesser scale will be decided by the companies. You know they, they the companies themselves who build these robots uh, don't want to be uh, seen as unethical companies. I mean I hope I hope most of them would would want to. We've seen as ethical company, so then they also will uh, naturally try to, you know, have some ethical aspects. I mean, try to embed ethical aspects uh, into the robot. So I think it's going to be a combination, a combination of just like now, just like with other 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 aspects of, of technology of society, it's going to be a combination of, you know, the the companies, uh, uh, the public, uh, ac- academics, and you know, uh, there'll be cases which go to court. Be, Decided by the Supreme Court, there'll be some regulation, uh, etc. And then and it, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll evolve. It'll evolve over time. I remember when I was a, a young kid, I, I didn't have to wear a seatbelt. You know, nobody thought of wearing a seatbelt. We just, we just jump in the car and didn't wear seatbelts. But, you know, of course, now, every, not, not only do you wear seatbelts, but you have special seats for, for babies, special seats for, for, for in, you know, infants. And, you know, every, every, everything evolves. As, as we go along and, and society, society evolves, it becomes sometimes more conservative, sometimes more liberal. And, and I, so I think, I think, you know, we'll also we'll see evolution about, about these ethical aspects as well. And as I make the previous example, things which, we, things which society thinks is unethical now, in 10 years time, 
may think it's uh, not not problem. But like uh, the example of you know, homosexual marriages, uh, now now it's a constitutional right in in America. Who would have thought that ten years ago? They, you know, it would have been impossible to even imagine that. Really, uh, you know, someone said that they'd be laughed off probably, but now it's a constitutional right. Uh, so so you know, society does evolve and and can and can evolve very rapidly, and and we uh, can. Uh, and, 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 and we can easily adapt uh, to, to, to these situations. Um, well, we've been speaking with Professor Dr. Adrian David Chiak, and this has been a very interesting conversation about sex robots. To finish it up, I just want to say, you know, I'd love to interview a sex robot along with you in the next show. It would be amazing to have both you and a sex robot speak. Um, and um, Yes. <laughs> Hopefully one day, and uh, I wonder if Isaac Asimov's rules from iRobot will be added to the ethics one day. Um, we shall see. Yeah. Yes, I think. I, I mean, it could be. Like, 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 I mean, that could be a starting point. And uh, uh, but you know, uh, it, it, you know, when, when we build very very complex machines, uh, even if you have these kind of basic rules. They make, there's always, they could, they, you, could, you can always think of possibilities that going to, there's, there will be some exceptions and or, or, or things will go wrong, you know. Machines are not perfect. Humans are not perfect either. So, uh, so, so I think, you know, yes, we can. We can put these, uh, uh, like, you know, like you said, as an as uh, rules, but, but we, we also have to very consider, we're considering, you know, very complicated systems, uh, these robots and artificial intelligence, and they, they might be able to have a kind of, uh, you know, think, thinking for themselves even, and uh, and and also they're dealing with humans. So if you put all those factors together, uh, I think you know we we can't just we we can put the we can put the rules there, but we 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 also have to have mechanisms. You know, what if what happens when 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 something goes wrong? What what happens when robots go wrong? And I think that way we can we can uh, cope better with any potential negative effects. And the final question for the interview. Uh, do you think that sex robots will be able to make breakfast for their lovers? Uh, sorry, it was a bit fuzzy. Could you say that again? Sorry. Do you think that a sex robot could make some eggs in the morning for the human counterpart? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I mean, uh, I think the, me the, the mechanics of sex, uh, you know, it's, it's, the mechanics of sex is very, very complicated. I mean, I, I don't want to... Uh, sound like it's a solved problem. It's going to take a, a lot, you know, a few years of, of quite a few years of research to get it right. So, you know, once you can get robots to successfully have sex in a very realistic way, uh, that's when you can cook the eggs or, you know, clean your house or do anything, or do almost any any other task you want. So, I think these robots are going to be uh, very, very useful for 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 our whole life, uh, emotional life, sexual life, and, and you know, just our our uh, 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 personal life, working life, they're going to be, they're going to be helpful in, 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 in many, many ways, I think. Wonderful. It's been a true pleasure and a privilege speaking with you, Dr. Chiak. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much. And also... Um, Thank you so much. Great, great, to, great to talk.